Hey guys, Jeff from Hubie's Garage, and I uh, just did a recent short that came out really well, got a, got a lot of views, and uh, it was concerning early production 55 Chevy uh, traits or characteristics. Being that I have it side by side with a later production, one of my other 55 Chevys, it's a later production 55 Chevy, I thought I'd go over some of the differences uh, between the early production 55s and the later production 55s. So uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the Bel Air two-door sedan and uh, show you some of those differences. All right, well, as most of you guys know, I have five 55 Chevys, and I've gone ahead and researched all of the production notes for the cars as I can, and I did find out that my Bel Air two-door sedan, the first Tri-5 Chevy that, that I bought, I uh, bought this one when I was 15 years old, uh, it's a Van Nuys car, and we'll go ahead and start with the uh, Fisher Cal Tag. So on the Cal Tag, we have this is the, the Cal Tag that they put on the firewall on the 55 Chevys. It shows it's a 1011D, which is the Bel Air two door sedan. It shows on the body number, it shows a VN, which stands for Van Nuys, and then it says 422. This car is an early production, and uh, when they actually assembled both the body to the drive line, the frame, the running gear, uh, and it left the assembly line in Van Nuys. It was October 18th, 1954. That was a Monday. And the actual serial number on the VIN number, I'm not going to get into specifics on the specific number, but let's just say it was a very, very low 5,000 number. And Van Nuys, for the production year 1955, they produced over 92,000 units or passenger cars from the Van Nuys assembly line. So of those 92,000 plus 55 Chevys that were built at the Van Nuys plant, this one was number 5,000 uh, and some change. So being that it's an October 54 car, that, makes, that qualifies it as an early production 55. So let's go ahead and look at some of those early production traits. Okay, the first thing that you'll notice on the firewall above the distributor is there's typically some hooks that are spot welded to the top of the firewall. Those hooks are missing. That's a harness hook. That's where the starter harness comes out of the firewall hole here. It goes up onto the hooks, goes across, and then uh, goes straight down to the starter. What they did in an early production car is they hid that harness, and I'm not sure why they wanted to later on thought it was better to put the harness on those hooks, because it was somewhat cleaner to do it this way, but you'll see this hole right here. This hole is where that harness came down and went straight down and went down to the starter. And it actually was hidden behind the battery because the battery box, you see the, the hole here, the hole here, and then the hole here and the hole here where the battery box attached to. So that hole with the grommet and the harness coming out of it was actually behind the battery. Now what we did at a later date, when we did the firewall, we wanted to clean up some of the wiring, my dad and I, Howie. We ended up moving the harness from the original hole here and we ended up putting it down on the lower tow board where it comes almost directly over to the starter. And we were trying to clean up the wiring and uh, keep some of the wiring away from the heat because we didn't want the headers in the exhaust heat making the harness brittle. So just as a comparison, I'll show you what a later production 55 looks. This is my historic gasser. This car was this car was another Van Nuys car. You can see it's a 1011, which is a 210 two-door sedan. It's a VN, which is Van Nuys, and it was Fisher body number 8502. So that was a later number. And if you look at the serial number, this one is up in the 86,000s of the 92,000 plus that Van Nuys built. And it was built on August 11th, 1955. So you can see what they did here. It's a little bit chewed up, but, but there's a, a hook here for the harness. 
the hook's missing, uh, probably got torn off in its racing days. So they added a different uh, type of a clamp. And then another hook here, and you'll see that the hole where the harness is uh, supposed to be, it's missing, it's not there. Now obviously we changed, made some changes. We got a Ford solenoid and that just helps with the heat with being able to refire the car. But uh, that was one of the later traits that the Beller two-door sedan did not have. Those hooks are not there. And that firewall uh, hole or where the grommet's supposed to be for the starter harness is missing on the later productions. So that's the difference there with those hooks. And just as one more example, I'll show you the Del Rey, which is a late production 55. So on the Del Rey, you could actually see the hooks a little bit better. They're spot welded to the firewall. It's got the three hooks for the harness. And then again, a lack of the hole for the starter harness. This is a later production. This is a Janesville car. I've got two Janesville cars. And you could see it's a 1011A, which the A makes it a Del Rey. And it's J for Janesville, and it's Fisher Body 7787. In the VIN for this one, uh, as far as the number that it came off the Janesville assembly line, it was in the 124,000s. The total passenger cars produced at the Janesville plant was over 211,000. So this one was 124,000 of 211,000 plus that were built on the Janesville line. So it's obviously qualifies as a late production 55 also. But again, you'll see the J-hooks in the lack of the hole for the starter harness on this one. So another uh, issue or difference on the early production is the fender skirt baffles. These are the panels that are on the uh, radiator support. Uh, you'll notice the early production ones, you can actually see, you can actually stick your finger through the hole because the cut, the angle cut is much greater than the later ones. Now, uh, what I've heard is that there was a triangle piece that went here. And you'll notice that this one does not have a, a, a rivet because most of them have a, bear, a very aggressive or a thick-headed rivet that's on, the, on them. This car did not uh, have the rivet, and it's got some very distinctive cuts that allow you to put your finger through the fender skirt baffle and uh, reach through the radiator support. Um, so uh, let me show you another one. I'll show you the the radiator support off the gasser we have right here you could see the fender skirt baffle on this one it's much tighter you can't get your finger through it and while this one doesn't have the big thick headed rivets looks like it was taken apart at one time it's got some rockwell bolts in it um, they got rid of those triangles and they tightened up uh, the cut or made it uh, cover up that hole so that is what you would say is a later fender skirt baffle and these are the more rare early fender skirt baffles because it does have that more aggressive cut and this car when i got it it was pretty original there wasn't much taken off of it it had all the original parts on it nothing had been interchanged the guy that i bought it off of uh you know, had done a really good job with taking care of the car. It just had a different paint job, and he had upgraded uh, the straight, say, the 235 six owner. He put a 59 283 in it and made it up to the original Power Glide. Everything else was all original. But for some reason, whatever these triangles, I guess maybe through the engine swap or whatever he did, those triangles ended up disappearing. I've yet to see those triangles, but I know that they're out there. I'll probably have to look at a, more of a restored car. But uh, this is what the fender skirt baffles look like. And just so you know, I've got another... Uh, we'll go check my shed and I'll show you some different uh, baffles too. All right, going into my shed. Let's see, I pulled everything away here. Got a couple, a couple of sheds that's got, that got 55 Chevy parts. And you'll see this is from the four-door. And you can see this one has the later fender skirt baffles also. You 
can't stick your finger through them and this is I notice it doesn't have the rivets either here's one that does have the rivets that's the big thick heavy duty thick headed rivet that's what most of these were supposed to have but again this one um, does not have the early more aggressively cut fender skirt baffles it's got the later ones that take less material off of that corner cut all right, I wasn't really going to get into the engine because I really don't deal too much with 265 parts, although I do have a few uh, parts. But uh, these are actually a couple of 56 Chevy air cleaners. And uh, the 56, uh, this is the two-barrel and this is the four-barrel. Actually, if you take this off, there's the 55 two-barrel air cleaner. And you put the, the lid on it, and that's a 56. This is a 56 air cleaner because... You can kind of see these little dents on it. Those are the spot welds for the round puck or plate that helps support the air cleaner a little bit better. And um, that's what they did in 56 because the 55 didn't have that plate and it didn't have these spot welds uh, that can be seen on the top of the air cleaner. But there was a real early version of a four barrel air cleaner in 55. I don't know if uh, uh, at what point they changed all this. In fact, all the changes from early production to later production, I don't know if all of these changes happened on the assembly lines all at once or if they were introduced at various different times. I know I did look at the production uh, dates for some of the plants and there were some days where they got 250 units made per day and there were other days where they made almost 700 cars per day so maybe they were going through some partial day retooling to change some of the production uh, characteristics of the cars that uh, we're going over now I, I don't know how much of a delay it caused production by making these changes so anyway as far as the air cleaner goes this is typically about what a 55 would look like obviously the snorkel would be a little bit shorter on the oval uh, air cleaner but that would be a late production 55 but on the early production 55 the four barrel air, four barrel air cleaner was a round snorkel and I'll go ahead and see if I could put a picture in right here anyway at some point I guess they figured out that the oval snorkel might be a little bit better uh, obviously the round snorkel is much more rare and that was characteristic of the early 265 four-barrel air cleaners. Okay, another item that was on an early production 55 was the door latch assembly. Now on this one, let me get the light on it, you could see the star striker. It's basically, let me see if I could do this with one hand, but the striker itself the star striker you could see how it's unshrouded it's basically exposed and the later ones this metal shroud comes down and covers that star striker and the early production door latches like you see here that's unshrouded went with a specific door striker latch Let's see if i can fit myself in here and it basically is a one-piece pot metal uh, door latch. Now, this one's actually a little bit different from what I thought, but it, it makes it look like it's actually got a second piece that's on here, but it's not. It's actually a one-piece solid pot metal. I guess it would be a casting, but this door, this door striker went with the unshrouded door latch. That's what they did in the early 55s. Now, they found out that there was a safety issue. Now, I don't know if uh, this was something that they found out with some of the crash testing that they did and maybe made some changes based on that. But the problem was, is if the B post here were to peel away from the door or the door were to peel away from the striker, it didn't really have anything that would catch the door latch and hold the door closed. Um, so I know that I've been on a few accidents with 
uh, Tri-5 Chevys, believe it or not, as a firefighter, I've responded on a couple of accidents that were very, very bad. Um, and I'll show one here, talk about that one. What happened on that accident was the car was hit by a 4 by 4 truck. It was T-boned in an intersection, and it wiped the B-post right off of the rocker panel and just wiped it right off. And the door and the quarter panel got pushed in and pushed the bench seat right out the passenger door. And the door uh, was obviously popped open on the passenger side. And when we got there, the guy was laying on the bench seat, which was halfway out of the car. Uh, scared the hell out of me because I tell you, at that point, I almost thought about selling all my Chevys because I wasn't real impressed with how well the car survived in an accident. And it was pretty scary to think of it that way. But one of the things that might have helped in some regards, I don't know that anything would have helped in that accident, but it's one of those accidents where the door popped open and it's because this star gear here on the latch mechanism is unshrouded and that shroud doesn't come over and hook onto the door striker. Now, we'll go ahead and look at the gasser, the later production car, and you can see on this one, it has the later door latches where everything is shrouded. It still has the star gear underneath it, but it's shrouded and covered so that nothing slides off of that gear or pops out. This basically, the shroud, when attached to this redesigned door striker, does not allow the door latch to come unhooked from the door striker. And what, I, what it is here is this one, they took the original pop metal door striker and they added this steel, I call it a J-hook, for lack of a better term. But it's basically a piece of steel with the two screws that holds it in place and it sticks up and it sticks up into that gear and the shroud rides behind these two teeth. So that if the car gets into a violent rollover, these two teeth are going to hang on to that outer shroud and keep the doors closed. So like I say, this was an early production late production thing. This is obviously here on the gasser what they changed it to look like and I think it's a much better design. I think I'm going to go ahead and change that on well I'm going to leave everything together on this car um, and uh, you know just keep it as is because this is an early production car. I'm just not going to change that but I will make sure that on all my other cars I do have the later production stuff. Actually, of the five that we have, um, the only one that has these early production door latches is the Beller two-door sedan right here. So let me show you some a difference here on the Del Rey. So on the Del Rey, I wasn't thinking and went out and found a guy that actually had door latches for sale. Okay, so the car already had the strikers, and you can see these are the late model strikers with the add-on J-hook, I call it, that's there. So these are obviously late production door strikers, and we know the Del Rey is a late model car. But the problem that I ran into, and I wasn't even thinking about it because I was just so excited to find somebody that actually had door latches for sale, and the guy was local, turns out they were early production door latches. So, now these will work. They will shut. Not real. It's kind of loud with this one because there's nothing in the doors. The doors are hollow. But they do latch. Um, not real great, but I will need to get some later door latch mechanisms for this car. Um, and one other side note about this. If you were to go ahead and look up, for example, you're going to go ahead and look up 
in the Classic Industries catalog and see what they sell for door latches, here's what they sell. These are the front door door latches. Now you notice they have a 55 only and then a 5657. Now what I figured out is for some reason the 55s they're showing that early production unshrouded door latch and for 5657 they're showing the shrouded ones. I don't know why they do that because again this is an early production versus late production and for whatever reason they decided to make early production 55 door latches which I won't buy. In fact, I'm considering buying the 56 to 57 door latches here for the Del Rey to go with my late production door strikers and see how well those work because I definitely want to have that more aggressive J hook there with the two teeth and I want to have that shrouded door latch. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these out and when we go ahead and put the car back together, I will make sure that I have the later production 55 door latches for this car. This car is going to be street driven and I want to make sure that it's going to be really, really safe on the street. It's going to have, I'm going to put a lot of miles on this car. All right, the next thing, I don't really have a real good example for this because obviously we swapped out the steering wheel. Originally, this car was uh, Neptune green, and or I should say the dash, the interior was Neptune green. The, the exterior was Harvest Gold India Ivory. When I got the car, it did have the original three-spoke Bel Air uh, Neptune green steering wheel. It did or completely original. Nobody painted it. And it did have that center horn cap assembly. And on the early ones, that center horn cap uh, assembly had pressure clips that basically you would snap it on to the steering wheel and it would stay on with those clips and they were under tension so that you could pull the centerpiece off and have it attached that way. Now, I don't know if those clips started wearing out and people were losing them, uh, you know, during steering and they just decided to, uh, in the later production, change it. But in the later production years, that three spoke horn center cap that center cap assembly that has the crest on it and whatnot, they ended up running screws through the back of them and those were screwed in place so that they wouldn't come off. I guess the clips just weren't strong enough and that was something that they decided to change on the steering wheels. I do have a couple of steering wheels around here, but they're 210 steering wheels and I have a, a 150 horn button. Um, but for some reason, I'm not sure I know the gasser, when I got the gasser, believe it or not, it still had the original stock steering wheel in that one, and that was a 210. And then I, believe it or not, have the original steering wheel for the Del Rey. Okay, another point about the 55s that was different uh, early production from late production, uh, some of you guys may notice it right now. Uh, this was brought up to me, and I completely forgot about it, but Don from Don's Hot Rod Garage had... Uh, asked about this in the comment on the short, uh, stating that this car obviously has the hole uh, on the dash, the holes on the dash uh, underneath the dash trim. So you can see I've, I went ahead and removed the Bel Air dash trim and sure enough, there's those oval shaped holes that are on the dash. Um, we're not exactly sure uh, what they are the only thing that I could think of is that instead of using the screws to attach these things, you know, you can see on the end here, they basically use a countersunk screw uh, that, that goes in the ends. And then the dash bezel uh, holds the other end in uh, up against the dash bezel itself. It basically just fits underneath the dash bezel on both sides. So I guess what happened was, is I don't think they needed to use 
these holes because I think what they were going to do is they were going to, on the back side of the dash trim, they were going to probably put some clips and have those things clip into place on the dashboard. But whatever happened, they never used the clips. At least I've never seen dash trim that's had uh, clips that go into these holes. And these holes, once you remove the Bel Air dash trim, you'll see that they're there, um, but they're not needed. So that's uh, a, a big telltale sign of an early production. 55 are those holes that basically were used, we think, for clips to hold the Bel Air dash trim on the dash. All right, now just like in the short, I went ahead and showed you the other thing, and that was that some of the items under the dash actually have a date stamp on them. This uh, is the clock. I'm not sure if this is a West Clocks, a Lux, or a New Haven. Um, I got to look a little closer into that. Um, but this clock did have, and it'd be interesting to know which one it is, because I know the Lux is a, is a more rare clock for the Tri-5s. And, um, you know, I don't know if they used that brand in the early production. But anyway, this, this clock does have a date stamp on it. I remember seeing this when I was about 15, and we went ahead and redid the dash on the car. Like I say, this car was very, very original. It had a lot of the original parts in the car. And, you know, it was pretty virgin as far as that stuff goes. One of the other items that I do remember is I do remember the heater assembly. And I went ahead and took this apart so that I could get this out. Let's see if I can do it with one hand here. It's kind of tricky because I'm doing this from an angle. And there's wires in there. Okay, so what I did remember is I do remember seeing a stamp on the deluxe heater control uh, panel. And I took this one apart and looked all around, and I thought I remember seeing it on the side. It was another October 54, just like the October 1954, just like what I saw. Then I remembered, I think, because I did restore this one back in the 80s, I almost want to say that the stamp was actually on the heater control arms. And I almost want to say that I saved those, even though they were broken, but I think they're somewhere in one of my Tri-5 Chevy parts bins. I'm not exactly sure. And one of the things after replacing these arms, I know these were replaced. The top assembly for the fan was never replaced. And lo and behold, look what I found. 1054 right on the, the fan control arm. So I think that's what happened. I think the original uh, control arms is what got the stamp. And this one actually was uh, stamped with a punch set. But that's uh, another item that will tell you whether or not, besides the clock, besides the holes on the dash, and this 1054, if this might possibly be an early production 55. Now that's granted that all the parts are original. And with this car, I don't know if I'm the second or third owner on the car, but I know that this car has a lot of the original parts. And just uh, to follow up on the dash, as far as what a late production dash looks like, here's the gasser, the 210 gasser. And you can see there are no holes in the area where the dash trim would have been. Now, of course, this is a 210, and the 210s did not have uh, the Bel Air dash trim. But, um, you know, that's one interesting item. I don't know if an early production 150 or 210 might have had those holes on the dashboard, or if all models were done that way, not knowing at Fisher which body was going to be what, if it was going to be a Bel Air, a 210, or a 150. And if you look on the Del Rey, again, there's no trim holes on the dash or those oval-shaped holes on that. And again, this is a 210 Del Rey, so 
Uh, again, it's not a Bel Air. It wouldn't have had the Bel Air trim. I'm not sure if those holes, again, are on an early production 150 or 210, not knowing if this if the body was going to be used for a Bel Air or not. And on Howie's hardtop, which is a late model or a late production Janesville car, uh, you could see the, the wire loom uh, hooks on there and uh, obviously it doesn't have the hole for the harness because uh, that was where the harness originally went was on these hooks so definitely a late production 55 also check the door latches and you can see the late model latches where the star is shrouded by the actual door latch itself. And then the late ones with the added um, J-hook, I call it, on the door latch. All right, I was going over my video, the lost and forgotten 55 Chevy of Hubie's Garage. This is my 210 four-door sedan that's actually in Montana. And this is the next earliest build of 55 that I own. This car was built January 31st of 1955. So you notice here it has the harness hooks across the top of the firewall. Uh, which would be indicative of a late model build. So they obviously, by January 31st of 55, they had changed over and done added the hooks. But the interesting part is, and this gets back to not knowing whether or not all these changes were made all at once, or these changes changed as the production line made its changes or found better ways to build the car. But you'll notice here, that it still it has the hole for the har the harness to go down to uh, the starter. Now originally I thought these hooks were for a six cylinder and that the V8 cars didn't have them, but obviously as we saw with Howie's hardtop, uh, his was a 265 car and it has the hooks. This is a six cylinder car and it has the hooks. The Del Rey was a 265 or 265 V8. It has the hooks, and the gasser was an original 235 six-cylinder, and it has the hooks. So it is definitely an early production versus late production and not engine type for these hooks for the harness. But again, here you do see the early production hole for the harness to come down to the starter. That's indicative of the early production 55s, yet this one has the hooks for the harness on it that were spot welded onto the car. So again, January 31st, 55, is that an early production or a late production? I don't know, and I don't know when the actual date or the breakoff point is for the early production versus the late production 55 Chevys. All right, guys, well, that's about all I got on the early production stuff. I know that there's other items that are probably out there as far as early production versus later production 1955 Chevy characteristics or traits that these cars have. I know that there were some different carburetors out there and stuff involving the engine. Uh, I just don't have a lot of 260. I really don't have much 265 parts. I don't really have anything to show as far as that stuff goes. But if you guys do know of some other... Uh, known early production traits of these cars uh, of, of for 55 specifically uh, Go ahead and leave it in the comments and you know, who knows maybe if I get enough of them Maybe it'll warrant a part two uh, Of looking at this early production 55 Bel Air two-door sedan a little closer, but anyway guys uh, appreciate you watching and We'll see you on the next one. Take care